when we add up a geometric series, what we're doing is we're adding infinitely many terms together. And so let, let's just go through the process here, how we might come up with a formula to add up infinitely many terms of this form. So we could do this with, with a few different things. This, this is actually an idea that we could use to add up an arithmetic sequence. It's the same idea that we use to, uh, say, find the fraction representation of a repeating decimal. Um, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and we're going to multiply both sides by something to get a similar equation. If we multiply both sides by r here, what we end up with is a series that's the same with the exception of the first term. So the first term in this series is a, and we just skip over that here. So then what, what I can do to get rid of this infinite series is subtract these. I can take this one, my new one, minus the original one, and all of these terms here are going to cancel out. Now I'm going to talk about this in a second, and, and this right here is kind of the key of why the ratio has to be less than 1, or at least the absolute value has to be less than 1. Uh, but we'll get there in a second. Because <coughs> the formula we're going to get is actually going to have the appearance of working for any r. So if I subtract this, if I take r times s sub n minus s sub n, what do I get? Just that, right? That wasn't meant to be a trick question. Um, and then... When I subtract this, what do I get? Actually, I should do that the other way. I'm sorry. I'm going to take the top one minus the bottom one. So S sub n minus R times S sub n equals, um, what's A minus nothing? A. a. What's going to happen with the ARs? They cancel out. The AR squareds, the AR cubes, and so on. All of them are going to cancel out, right? Right. Okay. Um, all the way up to the a times r to the n minus 1 is going to cancel, and this is going to cancel with the next term, and, and so on. Okay, so we get a bunch of canceling, and since it's infinite, then they're all going to cancel with each other, and this is all that's left. So if I want to know what the sum is, I can solve this for s sub n fairly easily. Just factor out our s sub n. We get 1 minus r there equals a. So that means that s sub n equals a over 1 minus r. Now, this formula works whenever the absolute value of r is less than 1. What happens to these terms when the absolute value of r is less than 1? They get smaller, right? that's really important that these terms get smaller. Because if the terms don't get smaller, you notice here that the a times r to the n minus 1 canceled out with the term before this one, right? So if, if we just take this term and we look at what's happening here, um, this one's going to cancel out with the next one, and the, the next one's going to cancel out with the following one. But at some point, um, if we just take a look at any of them, if this number here is not getting smaller, then... If we just look at a, at a finite sum or a partial sum, this term's not going to cancel and it's going to be added onto this sum. So really what we have here is, and, and you don't have to know this, but I think it's kind of fun. That's why I'm telling you. Um, S sub n is really going to be a over 1 minus r plus a times r to the n. And we're going to have this little term here. But if n goes to infinity, then this right here, when r is less than 1, is going to do what? It's going to be 0. If r is equal to 1, what's it going to be? It's just going to be a, right? If r is bigger than 1, what's it going to be? If this term doesn't approach 0, then the infinite sum is not equal to this. It's actually going to be infinite also. So that's kind of the key here is this term that doesn't cancel in the end, 
even though we're looking at an infinite series, we have to look at a partial sum. And if we're looking at partial sums, this is not going to converge if this doesn't go to zero. Does that make sense? Kind of? Sort of? If it's important for you to understand why r has to be less than 1, or the absolute value of r has to be less than 1, there's, there's your reason. So we've got this formula here. Um, this is an important formula to know. You do need to know this formula. And it basically says the sum of a geometric series is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio, uh, where the ratio has to be less than 1, or at least the absolute value of it. It, it can be an alternating series where r is negative 